everyone! So, just recently, Wizards of the Coast put out a massive Unearthed Arcana playtest document for expert classes. While the playtest included sweeping changes to all kinds of mechanics across the game, in this video, I specifically wanted to look at the changes that they made to the three base classes in this new expert category, which are the Bard, the Ranger, and the Rogue. I'll also briefly address some of the changes that they made to the game overall, and then I'll finally offer my first impressions at the very end of the video. Feel free to use the timestamps to skip around to the topics that you're most interested in. I will also link the playtest document in the description so that you can read the whole thing for yourself because, trust me, it is way too much to cover in one video. Now, before I look at the major changes for the experts, I just want to quickly clarify how the class groups work because it's going to be very important to all of the playtests moving forward assuming it stays around. In one d and there are four class groups in total, and each class in the game will fall under one of these labels, either warrior, priest, mage, or expert. The groupings themselves don't have any new rules directly tied to them, but they do give every class in the group a unifying feature. In the case of the experts, that feature is expertise. The groupings also make it so that in the future, magic items, feats, and possibly even new mechanics can be easily applied to more than one class at a time, even if they're in different source books, as long as they're in the same group. For example, even though the Artificer isn't from the player's handbook, the document mentions that they would officially be grouped under the Expert class. So, Artificers would also get expertise integrated into their base features at some point, as well as any other benefit that's associated with the Expert category, assuming the playtest remains unchanged. Another thing that I need to clarify before addressing the class reworks are some huge mechanical changes that they've made to the game in general. For starters, it looks like known casting may be going away for good, because both the Bard and the Ranger were changed into prepared spellcasters. And just in case you don't know, in D&D 5e, a known caster is a spellcaster that doesn't automatically know all of the spells on their class list. They have to learn spells from their list as they level up, and once they pick a spell, they're stuck with it for the rest of the game, versus prepared casters who automatically know all of the spells on their class's list at every stage of the game and can switch up the spells they want to use every single day. So a change like this could potentially be a huge buff to a lot of classes that use spells. In addition to that, instead of assigning different spells to certain classes, all of the spells in the game have been reorganized to fit under one of three lists, the Primal, Divine, and Arcane spell lists. Arcane spell lists are used by wizards, sorcerers, and warlocks, Divine spell lists are used by paladins and clerics, and Primal spell lists are used by druids and rangers. It's also worth noting that some of the spells had their schools changed in the playtest document, which will be important later, especially for the bard. And finally, all classes in the game are getting their capstone abilities moved down from 20th level to 18th level, and 20th level capstones are being replaced by epic boons, which are basically just supposed to be really, really strong feats. Now with all that out of the way, the first expert class rework that I want to address is the ranger, because they had some pretty cool changes. So starting at level one, we have some of the biggest changes. Like I mentioned earlier, rangers are still going to be half casters, but they're also prepared casters now. They get access to every spell on the primal spell list, except for spells that fall under the School of Evocation. The playtest document doesn't explain why rangers have that restriction, and I can't even begin to guess the reason, but honestly, it doesn't hurt the ranger too much. They're literally only losing out on two spells. The rest of the evocation spells that are on the playtest document weren't on the original ranger list to begin with, besides Wrath of Nature, which seems to have been mysteriously deleted from the game, and also Cure Wounds is being changed from an evocation spell to a conjuration spell, so rangers can still prepare it. Another really exciting change is that Hunter's Mark has basically become a class feature in this UA. From now on, Hunter's Mark is an always prepared spell for rangers and it doesn't require concentration anymore, which is huge. In addition to all this though, because they're part of the expert group, rangers also now get expertise at first level. Interestingly enough, this is very similar to the canny class feature that was optional for rangers in Tasha's, but the playtest version gives you two expertise skills instead of one, and it doesn't give you a language, so it's pretty different. And finally, the cost of all these nice buffs is that the natural explorer feature has been completely removed from the ranger. So the ranger has become a pretty front-loaded class with all of these features coming in right at level one, and its damage potential in the earlier parts of the game has skyrocketed because of the Hunter's Mark change. 
At level 2, Rangers get to pick one fighting style out of three options, which is relatively unchanged from the 2014 Ranger. The document does mention that even though fighting styles are going to be turned into warrior group exclusive feats, Rangers will still get access to those feats as they level up. Levels 3 through 6 are completely unchanged. At 7th level, Rangers now get the Roving feature, which gives you 10 extra movement speed as well as a swimming speed and a climbing speed. This is a slightly buffed version of the Tasha's optional feature of the same name, but it comes online just one level later. At level 8, Rangers no longer get Landstride as it's been completely removed from the game. Now, Rangers will just pick a feat instead. At level 9, Rangers get Expertise again. At level 10, Rangers no longer get Hide in Plain Sight. It's been completely removed and is getting replaced by a Ranger subclass feature. At level 11, Rangers get Tireless, which gives you 1d8 plus Proficiency Bonus Temp HP after you finish a short or a long rest, and lets you recover one point of exhaustion after a short rest. This is a revised version of the Tasha's feature of the same name that comes online one level later and activates off of rests instead of actions. Level 12 is completely unchanged. At level 13, you get Nature's Veil, which allows you to become invisible as a bonus action at the cost of a spell slot. It's similar to the ability of the same name from Tasha's, but it comes online way later at level 13 instead of level 10, and it uses your spell slots instead of a set amount of proficiency bonus uses per day. At level 14, you get your final Ranger subclass feature. The Vanish ability has been completely removed from the Ranger. At 15th level, you get Feral Senses, which was previously an 18th level feature. It gives you Blindsight up to 30 feet, and functionally, it's the exact same as the original ability. Levels 16 through 17 are unchanged. At level 18, you now get Foe Slayer, which has been changed to make your Hunter's Mark damage dice a D10 instead of a D6. Previously with this ability, you could only add your Wisdom modifier to your damage once a turn, so this is a huge damage increase. At level 19, you get your final feat, and at level 20, you now get an epic boon. Next up is the Bard, who saw some pretty significant changes as well. Starting at level 1, Bards are still full spellcasters like they've always been, but just like the Ranger, they can now prepare their spells. The catch, though, is that Bards can now only prepare spells that are specifically from the Divination, Enchantment, Illusion, and Transmutation schools of magic, and they can only be from the Arcane spell list. So, unfortunately, that does remove a lot of pretty good spells that the Bard had access to before, at least for the earlier parts of the game. But they did also get some newer spells to replace the old ones as a compensation of sorts. I'll list all the spells that the Bard gained and lost on the screen. Also at level 1, you still get Bardic Inspiration like you always have, but it's been changed in a big way. Firstly, it no longer uses your Charisma modifier to determine how many dice you get it uses your proficiency bonus. Secondly, it no longer uses your bonus action, it uses your reaction. You can now use your bardic inspiration as a reaction to someone failing a d20 test within 60 feet of you, and it will work as long as you can see or hear the person that you want to inspire. In addition to that, you can also use bardic inspiration to heal as a reaction now. You have to be able to see or hear the person, and they have to be within 60 feet of you, but you can heal now for an amount equal to one roll of your Bardic Inspiration die. This is basically giving all bards healing word as a reaction for a proficiency bonus amount of times per long rest. At level 2, you no longer get Jack of All Trades, as it's been pushed back to level 5. Song of Rest has also been changed to Songs of Restoration and works totally differently. You no longer get to heal people for an extra HP after expanding hit dice during a short rest. Instead, you passively unlock a handful of support-oriented spells as you level up in Bard that are always prepared for you. So at this level, you now have Healing Word always prepared for you from your Songs of Restoration feature. You also get Expertise, which got moved from level 3 down to level 2. At level 3, now you just get your Bard subclass. At level 4, you get a feat, like always. You also get Lesser Restoration as an always prepared spell from your Songs of Restoration feature. At level 5, you get Jack of All Trades again, which lets you add half of your proficiency bonus to an ability check. However, it's been reworded in a way that now makes it so that you can't use this feature on initiative rolls, because apparently that was a thing. It has to be specifically used for skill checks that you lack proficiency in and don't add your proficiency bonus to. You also no longer get Font of Inspiration, as it's been moved to level 7. At level 6, Counter Charm has been completely removed, and you get a subclass feature instead. You also learn Mass Healing Word from your Songs of Restoration feature. 
At level 7, you now get Font of Bardic Inspiration, which gives you back all of your spent Bardic Inspiration dice on a short or long rest. In addition to that, and this is really exciting, now when you roll a nat 1 on your Bardic Inspiration, you still get to keep the die. The one that you rolled can still be used, but now you don't have to feel bad for wasting a dice on an unlucky roll anymore. At level 8, you get a feat as usual, and you also learn Freedom of Movement from your Songs of Restoration feature. At level 9, you get Expertise for a second time. At level 10, you now get a subclass feature, so bards will finally get 4 subclass features instead of 3. You also learn your final spell from your Songs of Restoration feature, which is Greater Restoration. At level 11, you get Magical Secrets, which saw some significant changes. The way it worked before is that at level 10, 14, and 18, you got to pick two spells of a level you can cast to learn permanently from any class's spell list. The way it works now though is that at levels 11 and 15, you pick either the arcane, primal, or divine spell list, and then you can freely prepare any two spells from the list you choose each day. There's also no restrictions on the school of magic you can pick from when you're choosing spells to prepare via this feature. So, all of the spells that you were locked out of from the old bard spell list during the early game are accessible to you once more once you get this feature. At level 12, you gain a feat as per usual. At level 13, you gain... nothing! At level 14, you gain a bard subclass feature as per usual. At level 15, you get to pick a second list to use for your magical secrets feature, and it can't be the same list as the one you picked at level 11. At level 16, you get a feat as per usual. At level 17, you get nothing. At level 18, you get Superior Bardic Inspiration, which actually got a nice buff. It used to be so that you would only gain one use of Bardic Inspiration back after rolling initiative, but only if you had no more uses of it left. Now, you just get two uses of Bardic Inspiration back for free when you roll initiative, and it doesn't matter if you spent all of the dice or not. At level 19, you get a feat as per usual, and at level 20, you get an epic boon. Now, the Rogue was the class that had the least amount of changes, but probably saw the most overall nerfs. However, because of some of the changes that the game made to the dual-wielding mechanics, it indirectly buffed the Rogue as compensation. I won't get into the dual-wielding mechanics in this video, but please do keep that in mind as we go through these changes. So, at levels 1 through 5, the Rogue is completely unchanged from the way they are now. However, Sneak Attack got some clarification to its warding, which ended up nerfing the rogue's damage by a bit. It was changed so that it can only activate once on each of the rogue's turns, and specifically when they take the attack action. So Sneak Attack no longer legally applies to opportunity attacks, or to any reaction attack that you might be granted outside of your own turn. At level 6, you no longer get Expertise, as it's been moved to 7th level. You now get a subclass feature instead. At level 7, you get Expertise. You no longer get evasion, as it's been moved to 9th level instead. At level 8, you get a feat as per usual. Now at level 9, you get evasion. However, the wording of this ability was changed to specify that you can't use evasion if you're incapacitated. Makes sense. At level 10, you get a feat, and you also get a subclass feature now. Levels 11 and 12 are unchanged, you get reliable talent and another feat, respectively. At level 13, you get an entirely new ability called Settle Strikes, which gives you advantage on any attack roll that targets a creature within 5 feet of an ally that isn't capacitated. So basically, you get pack tactics. At level 14, you now get a subclass feature. Rogues no longer get blind sense. At level 15, you get slippery mind as per usual, but it's been buffed to include proficiency in both wisdom and charisma saving throws. At level 16, you get a feat as usual. At level 17, you gain the elusive feature, which got moved from level 18. At level 18, you get stroke of luck. You just get it a little bit earlier. At level 19, you get your final feat, and at level 20, you get an epic boon. Now as for my thoughts on this playtest, overall, I have to say that I pretty much like most of the changes that they made in this playtest. I love what they're doing with the class groups, I love how they're reorganizing the spells into thematic lists instead of by class, I just feel like it makes things so much easier to keep track of. Without having done any playtesting on any of the classes though as of the recording of this video, my initial thoughts are that I am kind of worried that the ranger may be just a tad bit strong in the early game. Between having access to an insane damage boost thanks to the Hunter's Mark changes, and also getting prepared spellcasting earlier, I worry that it might be a bit much, but we'll see as more playtest results come out in the coming weeks. Also, 
I've heard people mentioning that it feels like the ranger changes have completely removed all of the wilderness exploration flavor from the class and turned them more so into a generic damage dealer instead. I hadn't even honestly considered this while looking through the playtest. But in hindsight, I would agree with that. The exploration features that the original ranger got were in a weird spot because on one hand, exploration in mini tables tended to get hand waved or ignored most of the time, but on the other hand, the ranger's original features were so strong when it came to exploration that even if you did want to interact with that part of the game more, the ranger's features would have a way of trivializing it and it just took a little bit of the fun away, so it was kind of a lose-lose. Personally, I would like to see a happy medium of both, if it's possible. I think I would like to see some more exploration abilities re-added back to the ranger so that they can keep their unique class identity as a survivalist expert instead of just becoming, as my friend puts it, a fighter subclass. For bards, I've never really played one so I might be a little bit biased, but I feel like the changes are very interesting and honestly, I kind of like them. I feel like limiting the schools of magic that the bard has access to helps give it more of an identity as a spellcaster, and I think that the schools it gets access to really fit the flavor of a bard overall. Bard was always sort of associated with more of a supportive role, and it seems like they're pushing that identity really hard now with the changes they made to bardic inspiration, which honestly, as a support lover, I like it, and I think it's pretty great. I think it's nice that Bardic Inspiration is a reaction now because it'll definitely prevent less mishaps when it comes to players forgetting to use it, and then the Bard feeling regret <laughs> that they even bothered in the first place. <laughs> but I do get that losing a lot of the standout spells on the Bard list early on really sucks. I am wondering though if maybe being a prepared caster will help balance that out though because that is a very strong boost to the Bard's utility. One of the things I am really concerned about with the bard though is that the font of bardic inspiration feature got pushed back to 7th level from 5th level. And now that the amount of bardic inspiration dice that you get scales with your proficiency bonus instead of your charisma modifier, you have less dice for a longer amount of time. I feel like those two factors combined are going to make using bardic inspiration in the early levels feel really painful. And I also think that magical secrets comes online a bit too long to Personally, I think I would really like to see either the Font of Inspiration ability or the Magical Secrets ability come online a little bit earlier than they do in the playtest. Level 11 is end game for most tables and unless they're going to be making changes that make it easier to manage high level play for DMs in 1D&D, then that's still an ability that the majority of players just won't be using, which is really unfortunate since it's a really cool feature, especially in this rewritten version. As for the rogue, I have to be honest, I have literally never played one and I'm just not really familiar with marshals in general, so it's a little bit hard for me to give an opinion. Though I do feel like it's a shame that their newest features come online at level 13 and 15. Hardly anybody is playing a campaign at those levels. Also my friend is a rogue lover and he was really really upset that evasion got moved back from level 7 to level 9. I get it, I do, but I do still stand by the fact that making evasion unusable while incapacitated is uh, completely sensible and I don't really know how or why that was allowed to work before. <laughs> but my biggest concern overall is that I just really hope that they'll be mindful of keeping each class's unique identity intact. Because of things like making certain known casters into prepared casters, reorganizing the spell list into smaller themed lists, and giving class groups shared features, I'm just a little concerned that we might begin to see too much homogenization between the classes. This is the one thing that I absolutely do not want to happen in one D&D. Each class should feel distinct and flavorful, in my personal opinion. That is important to me. But man, oh my god, that was a lot to take in. I would really love to hear your thoughts on the playtest material if you've read it or tried it at all, and I'd also like to know what changes are you personally hoping for in the playtest to come? Let me know in the comments, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye!